potentials. Where are the potential markets? Where are the potential markets? And I will be focusing on Africa. I'll be focusing on Africa. Of course, you can do your research for Europe and Asia. I'll be focusing on Africa. Potential market. Remember what you'll be focusing on? Medical supply, food, personal care, fast food, consumer goods, agri, e-commerce, ICT. Look at the world. Look at the world. Look at the major, major player in the world. China, US, Japan, Germany, France, UK, India, South Korea. These are the largest economy in the world. What is their focus? Manufactured goods. And that's why I'm bringing them up. They are mainly, man and I'll show you very soon, they are mainly focusing on manufactured goods. And that is what has helped. And if you see the data I showed the other time, $18 trillion, 12.25 manufactured goods, 1.7 are Greek. Now let's look at this. These are the import of Africa, top 25 import of Africa, according to UN, top 25 import of Africa. Still looking at the same product we're talking about. But you know the reason why some product here will not be a priority right now? Any product on this list that is not food, that is not uh, uh, food and fast food consumer goods, the potential is less because of what the world is. Like I said, in the next one year, what we should be looking at? Fast moving consumer goods. Fast moving consumer goods. Look at share of export of Africa, share of Nigeria, 91%. This was between 2016 and 2018. 91% of the export are fuel, 91%. Algeria, 95%. Angola, 97%. Libya, 88%. Is South Africa, can you see South Africa is more diversified than Nigeria? South Africa, Egypt is very diversified. Can you see Egypt? So what we are saying Nigeria should do, Africans are doing it. Ghana, can you see Ghana is very diversified? Gabon, can you see? Uh, Congo, can you see? Diversified. Share of GDP, despite the enormous volume of fuel, is contributing just 10% of the GDP of Nigeria. Enormous volume of fuel exports. Can you see the contribution to GDP? Enormous volume of work. So that means we are doing a lot of other things that we're supposed to be considering for export, which we are not looking at. 10 top basic food import, uh, item by Africa. Exported food by Africa and imported food of Africa. Let's look at the imported food. Imported food of Africa. 10 most important food. Wheat, sugar, honey, rice, edible products, fish, vegetable fat and oil, maize, fish, fresh fish, Milk, animal feed, feed, vegetable fat, and oil. These are the most imported by Africa. So that means if I'm looking at importing into Africa, that's what I'm looking at. Composition of intra-African trade. Look at manufactured goods. Composition of African export to the rest of the world. We are doing more manufactured goods ourselves, and we are doing less manufactured goods outside. We are also doing a lot of mineral outside, very less mineral to ourselves. So we can do a lot. So that means Africa is actually buying from themselves a lot of manufactured goods. A lot of manufactured goods. Largest importer of top five imported food, imported food in Africa. Largest importer, top five imported food in Africa. Wheat, who are the largest importer? Look at the country where the potential of wheat are. Rice, look at the country where the potential are. Can you see why Nigeria is not here? It's going in, it's coming in through Benin. Sugar, look at the largest importer. Uh, edible product and preparation. Look at largest importer. And then fat, oil, crude. Look at the largest importer in Africa. Commodity at a glance. Coffee sector in East Africa. Coffee is a big, big business. Nigeria can produce coffee, but I'm not sure of how much of that we are doing right now. See, in Africa, African earn mere 10% of the total value of the agro value chain. Why? Because Africa is contributing. Look at coffee. 90%. Africa is doing 10%. 90% of income of coffee goes to consuming countries. Cocoa. Africa produces 70% of world cocoa. 70% of world cocoa. But how much are we earning? Well, I'm not even sure we are earning up to 30%. You do know that the total market for cocoa in the world, total market for cocoa in the world is 9 billion. Total market for cocoa in the world. Now, now look at this. Only 2 billion out of me, more than 100 billion in annual of chocolate, only 2 billion. Can you see? Only 2 billion. Only 2 billion. And the total value of cocoa in the world, the market, I've seen people buying cocoa in the world are not more than $10 billion. The value of cocoa purchase, value of total market. But chocolate, look at revenue of chocolate. Look at revenue of chocolate, where the cocoa itself, the, so when they add value to it, look at how much people adding value are making. 
small and medium-sized SME were positioned to tap into the regional export destination, representing 90% of Africa, tariff-free access. And that's the opportunity we have within the African continent that we must consider. Intra-regional uh, exports compared. Look at Africa, 70%. Look at this data. Europe, about some, Europe contribute about 33% of world trade, EU, EU in particular. Intra, their population is about 500 million people. Intra-EU trade is almost 70%. Africa is 1.2 billion people. Intra-African trade is 70% because Africa contribute just less than 3%, about 2.6% at my last check, 2.6% of trade in the world. So you can see something clearly. The reason for AFCFTA to allow Africa to trade together is because with AFCFTA, we are going to do more trade among ourselves. If we do more trade among ourselves, do you know the implication of that? The implication of that is that we are going to increase our contribution to world trade. Currently, we are doing a lot of trade, though, not because we are not doing but we are doing commodities and nobody is paying good price to commodities. But if we're adding value, we can keep it and export it later. If we're adding value, we can keep it and export it later. So no much worries. There's no much worries. There is no much worries if we focus on value added. And like I said, please don't talk about the complaint about the fact that, ah, how do we have value? This and that. No. No, countries are doing it. And I will show you how we can do it right now. Just in case someone is listening to me that is a government person that can help push it to the government of his state for the government of his state to consider it, actually. <laughs> the reason is because it's so sad that we have this huge, enormous potential, but we're not taking advantage of those potentials. So interregional trade, Africa is doing just 17%. We are doing, to the rest of the world, 50% of our shipment within Africa, we are doing for crude extractive, 26% of our shipment within Africa and the rest of the world. Manufactured goods, rest of the world. We are doing more manufactured goods. So 42% of our trade within Africa is manufactured goods. But 26% of our trade outside Africa is manufactured goods. So we are doing more manufactured goods among ourselves.